welcome future EMTs. Today we're going to get into the weeds of the National Registry exam category of cardiology and resuscitation. We'll go over 10 questions in detail. We'll explain the right and wrong answer choices and common pitfalls in these questions. So grab a piece of paper and be prepared to pause this video so that you can come up with an answer on your own before we get into the details. Good luck. As a reminder, in case you don't already know this, the NREMT cognitive exam is divided into five content categories. Cardiology and resuscitation are one of those. Each question also falls into one of three cognitive levels, recall, application, analysis, and so this set will cover a few of each. All right, let's get into question number one. You arrive on scene to find an adult male who is unresponsive and not breathing. What is the first thing you should do? A. Deliver two rescue breaths. B. Check for a carotid pulse. C. Apply the AED. Or D. Begin chest compressions. The answer is... B. Check for a carotid pulse. Why is that? A is not appropriate before a pulse check. B is correct because per BLS guidelines, you must assess for a pulse for no more than 10 seconds. That comes first. C is wrong because the AED is applied after confirming pulselessness and usually after starting CPR, and D is incorrect because you only begin CPR after confirming that the person has no pulse. The common mistake here is skipping the pulse check or assuming cardiac arrest. Don't get ahead of yourself in these questions, just operate with what you have and what the question tells you you have. Question two. What is the compression to ventilation ratio for a single EMT performing CPR on an adult patient? A, 15 to two. B, 30 to two. C, five to one. Or D, two to 30. The answer is B, 30 to two. Why? 15 to 2 is for two-person child slash infant CPR. Know your ratios. C is correct because standard ratio for a single rescuer adult CPR is 30 to 2. C is outdated and incorrect, and D is inverted. Common mistake here is confusing adult and pediatric CPR ratios. If you are not super, super solid, if this is not cemented into your brain, Go and review your CPR ratios for single and double rescuer. Question three. You are performing CPR on a pulseless patient when your partner arrives with an AED. What do you do next? A. Stop CPR and apply the AED. B. Continue CPR while your partner prepares the AED. C. Wait, for, wait to finish your current set of compressions before using the AED. Or D. Check for a pulse again before using the AED. The answer here is B. Continue CPR while your partner prepares the AED. Why? A is wrong because you never stop CPR unless absolutely necessary. The only times you're going to do that is when the AD instructs you to clear the patient because it's analyzing, and then when it instructs you to clear the patient to deliver a shock. Besides that, you go ahead, you continue CPR as your partner sets up the AD around you. He or she works around you while you're doing CPR. B is correct because one rescuer continues compressions while the other sets it up, plain and simple. 
C is incorrect because time is critical. Don't wait. And D is wrong because pulse checks occur every two minutes unless instructed. Common mistake here is delaying compressions while setting up the AED. Question four. You find a six month old infant who is pulseless. You are alone. What is the correct compression to ventilation ratio? A, 30 to two. B, 15 to two. C, three to one. Or D, continuous compressions with ventilations every six seconds. The answer is A, 30 to two. Why? A is correct because single rescuer for infant requires the ratio of 30 to two. B is 15 to two, which we talked about earlier. That is for two rescuer infant and in pediatric CPR. If you only have one rescuer, 30 to two. C, three to one, not correct for neonatal resuscitations. Know your ratios. And D is wrong because continuous compressions are only used with an advanced airway in place. You should know. This should be an easy one, 30 to two. The common mistake here is applying two rescuer or neonatal ratios to single rescuer infant CPR. Should I say it again? Sure, I will. Know your ratios. Question five. You respond to a patient with chest pain. He is alert, breathing adequately, and has a prescription for nitroglycerin. His blood pressure is 84 over 58. What should you do? A, assist him with his nitroglycerin. B, administer high flow oxygen and prepare for transport. C, have him chew an aspirin and lie flat. Or D, call for ALS and administer oral glucose. The answer here is B, administer high flow oxygen and prepare for transport. Why is that? A is contraindicated because his systolic blood pressure is less than 90. B is correct because oxygen and transport is safe and within your scope of practice will help this patient. C is wrong because aspirin is okay, but lying flat with hypotension is risky. Don't do it. And D is wrong because glucose is not indicated unless hypoglycemia is suspected. There was nothing in this question that might indicate low glucose. The common mistake here is giving nitro without checking the blood pressure or without considering your contraindications. And so don't do it. For any sort of medication, treatment, or otherwise, know your indications, know your contraindications. Don't give things blindly. Question six. A bystander is doing CPR when you arrive. The patient is unresponsive and apneic. You check and find a pulse. What should you do? A, continue compressions. B, attach the AED and shock the patient. C, begin assisted ventilations. Or D, recheck the pulse in another 10 seconds. The answer is C begin assisted ventilations. Why is that? A is wrong because CPR isn't needed with a pulse. You are arriving on scene, you are taking over patient care, and now you're responsible for making decisions. And you wouldn't start CPR on somebody with a pulse. And so, when you reassess the patient, you determine they have a pulse, you determine that CPR is not necessary. Is it possible that this bystander tried to feel for a pulse, didn't, and decided to start mediocre CPR on somebody that was otherwise unconscious? Yeah, it's possible. But remember, when you're taking over care, you need to make your assessments. B is wrong because AD is not indicated unless the patient is pulseless. Same sort of thing, don't just assume. 
C is correct because breathing is inadequate. So now what's left? The person has a pulse. Maybe that pulse was restarted by some very solid CPR that happened before you arrived. And so now you have to manage what's left. Start with BVM support and continue. D, it's time sensitive, act now. The common mistake here is continuing compressions on a patient with a pulse. Just because somebody started compressions, that's great. Bystanders can be super helpful, but bystanders can also be super wrong sometimes. Question seven. During CPR, you deliver a shock using the AED. What is your next immediate action? A. Check for a pulse. B. Deliver two rescue breaths. C. Resume chest compressions. Or D. Wait for the AED to reanalyze. The answer is C. Resume chest compressions. Why is that? A is wrong because you do not check a pulse until after two minutes of CPR. B is wrong because breaths are part of the cycle, but they're not done right after shock. C is correct because immediate compressions equals the best outcome. After the shock's delivered, you jump right back into compressions. And D is wrong because AD will prompt when ready. Don't wait passively. The common mistake here is stopping to reassess too early after shock. CPR is one of those things that you should view as a pretty hard and fast flow chart. And so if you're not thinking about it in that way already, um, start doing so. One piece after another, no delay. Question eight. 70-year-old male collapses at home. Bystanders say he gasped and then stopped moving. He has no pulse. What rhythm is most likely present? A, a systole. B, ventricular fibrillation. C, sinus bradycardia. Or D, pulseless electrical activity or PEA. The answer is B ventricular fibrillation. Why is that? A is wrong because the systole is typically a terminal rhythm, not shockable, not something you do much with. B is correct because sudden collapse with gasping is typically V-fib, something that's seen common enough that we can make that assessment that you might see this assumption even made in your textbooks. C is wrong because bradycardia produces a slow pulse, not no pulse. And D is wrong because pulseless electrical activity doesn't usually involve sudden collapse with gasps. The common mistake here is assuming all responsive patients are in asystole, um, even with you know chest pain and shortness of breath that uh, you know turns into somebody who's pulseless and not breathing. Um, unlike what you see in the movies and on TV, uh, people don't immediately go into asystole. That's not how it works. And so wipe that from your memory now. If you haven't already, um, just get rid of it sooner than later. Question nine. You find a middle-aged man with chest tightness and shortness of breath. He is pale, sweaty, and anxious. His vitals are a blood pressure of 110 over 70, a heart rate of 98, and a respirations of 20. What is the best initial treatment? A. Coaches breathing and monitor. B. Apply high flow oxygen and prepare for transport. C. Assist with his prescribed nitroglycerin. Or D. Begin CPR immediately. The answer is B. Apply high flow oxygen and prepare for transport. Why is that? 
A doesn't address possible cardiac ischemia. C is correct because oxygen plus transport are immediate priorities for this patient. C is wrong because nitroglycerin is an option only after a full assessment and blood pressure check. D is wrong because he is conscious and breathing. CPR here is not indicated. The common mistake here is delaying oxygen in a stable but symptomatic cardiac patient. There's a lot of different things, but shortness of breath, chest tightness, these sorts of things, I'm immediately going to oxygen. It's an easy thing, does not have many contraindications. So for very high likelihood cardiac patients, oxygen and transport. Question 10. You are performing CPR on an adult male. After two minutes, the AED advises no shock. What should you do? A. Check for a pulse and signs of life. B. Resume compressions immediately. C. Ventilate the patient for 30 seconds before resuming CPR. Or D. Switch roles with your partner and analyze the rhythm again. The answer is B. Resume compressions immediately. Why is that? A is wrong because pulse checks are only done when instructed or at the two minute intervals. B is correct because shock slash no shock decisions are followed immediately by compressions. It's just part of the cycle. C is wrong because there should be no delay for ventilation only cycles. And D is wrong because AD already analyzed the rhythm. You resume CPR until the next prompt. The common mistake here would be stopping to reassess when compressions should continue. We're trying to minimize delays, minimize interruptions in all of CPR, which is why we take the time to refresh these things so often so that we quickly and accurately remember our CPR progression flowchart. Thank you for watching. I really hope you found these questions helpful. Please like and subscribe if you can. It really helps us out. If you missed even one of these questions, definitely like and subscribe so that we can be part of your learning journey. Ask questions in the comments if you have them and let us know what score you got. We'll see you in the next one.